if you had a chance to listen to our sister station, uh, Lima Sports Talk 940 WCIT, this morning on the Dan Patrick Show, it was the commissioner, Dr. Dan Ross. State championship, Ohio State championship in hockey, stopped after seven overtimes, tied at one, declaring co-state champions. The man who made the decision, with the help of uh, both coaches, is uh, Dr. Dan Ross. He's the Ohio High School Athletic Association Commissioner. Can I have the second place trophy? Can you? Yeah. Would you like me to mail that to you? Yeah. Yeah, we'll put sure. it on display here in the man cave. Since nobody gets the second place trophy, I'll be more than happy. Well, that is true. We'll put it on the uh, the table here and put it on display for national TV. Well, that'll be a good thing. There you go. <laughs> that was about the entire interview, but uh, uh, that's the way it ended. And let's bring in uh, uh, the great man, the OHSAA commissioner, uh, Dan Patrick, huh? You just can't help yourself, can you? Well, we had a busy weekend. Yeah, that was quite a game, wasn't it? It was uh, the best high school hockey game I think I've ever seen. All right. Are you sending the runner-up trophy to Dan Patrick? I most certainly am. <laughs> that is great. All right. Uh, for those that did what, not... What a, what a wonderful brand. He'll, he'll have an Ohio State trophy in, in, in his man cave that he can see every day. Yeah, absolutely. That's live on uh, TV and... And, of course, uh, all over uh, radio stations across the world. So uh, good stuff there. Good promotion uh, for the OHSAA, of course. Let, let's go back to that game, uh, seven overtimes. And, and the bottom line is this. There was no shootout uh, rule in place. So you were looking at the safety of these players and making the decision for the co-championship? Yes, we had uh, there is in, in, now national federation will permit a state by local adoption to have a, a, a shootout in their state, and there are some states that have a, a shootout. We uh, we do not because our coaches uh, have never brought that for approval. And, and truthfully, Vince, I'm not in favor of a shootout uh, because I think you take a team game and uh, you hang it around the the kid. Uh, one of the individual kids next, and uh, and I don't want to do that. I think there are other options, and that uh, and well, I'm sure we're going to talk about that. Maybe uh, you play the first three overtimes just like we do now. That and, and for the people in your listening uh, area that maybe are familiar, a hockey overtime is eight minutes long, and a regular period is 15 minutes. So the youngsters on uh, Saturday uh, played. Uh, three periods for their regular game, which was 45 minutes, and then they had seven overtimes of eight minutes apiece. So they ended up with 101 minutes of hockey, and they had played 45 minutes. They played a, a full game uh, less than 24 hours before. That's a lot of hockey, uh, so I, I, and especially a hockey. It's a yeah, very, it's a lot of contact. Uh, the last 56 minutes. Uh, the youngsters were on 30-second shifts, which means every 30 seconds you're back on the ice, so they're not getting any time to relax. So when we got, when we got, uh, I guess I noticed some of the kids that uh, probably the last third of the sixth overtime, and then in the seventh overtime you could see kids that were dragging. There were kids that would come over and try to get off the ice, and somebody had to help uh, and grab their leg and pull them over so they could get off the ice because they couldn't get their legs up. Uh, so at the end of the seventh overtime, I went over behind where the uh, benches were. It was in, down in Nationwide Arena where the Blue Jackets play. And uh, both of the ADs were kind of coming toward me. And uh, they were they had, uh, were seeing the exact same thing that I was seeing. And so I asked them both to get their coaches. And uh, they both brought uh, their, their coaches out of the locker room. We met, uh, there was a Steve Neal, who's in our office at the, uh, Liaison with hockey, uh, the gentleman Joel Sigmund from the Blue Jackets, uh, Pat O'Toole and uh, Roy uh, Fitzpatrick from Ignatius, and uh, uh, Mike Jones and Chris Irwin from Sylvania Northview, and we pulled our pulled everybody together. And I said, you know, I'm worried about the condition of our kids. Uh, I said, you guys are much better aware because you've been in the locker room with them. Uh, but this is what I'm seeing uh, that we played now. 
10 periods of hockey uh, and uh, hasn't been settled on the ice, that the most that we're going to go is two more. Uh, and we can stop at the, the, the it's going to end with co-champions. If we go two more, we can go one more if you guys are okay with that, or we can stop it right now. You know the condition of your kids better than I. What do you want to do? And uh, they talked about it a couple of minutes, and I told them that if it ended and it did not end on the ice, and we ended it because of that game limitation, that we would declare co-champions. So one of the coaches looked at me and he said, we'll both be co-champions? And I said, absolutely. So he reached out his hand to the other coach and said, are you okay with this? And he said, I'm absolutely fine with this. The two coaches shook hands and hugged each other. I would have loved to have had that picture because that was that's what high school sports is all about. Uh, we They went to the locker rooms to tell their kids. Now, number one, the kids were not happy with that because the kids were uh, adrenaline was rushing uh, and the emotion was high. The kids weren't happy with it. We made that announcement on the ice, and there's probably 3,000 people in there, and uh, they were not happy with that. Uh, but their focus is not the same as ours. That the the adults that are in charge of making sure that uh, the kids are taken care of, which is the coaches and the ads, and and it's the OHSAA when we're running a tournament. Our primary concern is the health and safety of our kids. It isn't about who wins, and it isn't about trophies, and it isn't about whatever. It's about making sure that our kids are safe. Uh, the the wonderful thing about it, we had two teams that uh, got on the bus uh, after almost five hours of hockey on Saturday. Uh, and they, both teams were able to take every one of their players home. They didn't have to leave somebody here that uh, was in a hospital or uh, had any kind of a catastrophic injury. And, and one of the coaches said something that, is, uh, he's, that I didn't think of. <laughs> he said, you know, when your electrolytes get out of balance, kids get loopy. And he said, we had some loopy kids. And he said, you get a loopy kid that gets hit and boarded or he takes a shot in the head, he said, then you're probably looking at a catastrophic injury. He said, we put our kids on the bus and they're all home safe. Sports Out with Coza with the Ohio High School Athletic Association Commissioner, Dr. Dan Ross, uh, talking about the incredible seven-overtime state hockey final between Cleveland State Ignatius and Sylvania Northview. Uh, Co-champions declared, and uh, it was interesting because before we came on with you, I was talking about, uh, you know, when, when you have a great game and players, no matter the sport, uh, give it their all, and they leave it all on the court of the athletic fields. Uh, there has to be a winner and a loser. And in this case, there, there were co-champions. So for once, uh, it works. But certainly uh, the photo that I saw, the kids were not happy. I heard the crowd wasn't happy. What's been the reaction uh, nationally? Uh, because you have been, you've been uh, hit by just about everybody, haven't you? <laughs> Well, we've had the circuit. We've had the New York Times and the radio stations in North Dakota and uh, the Dan Patrick Show and ESPN and, and all the above. Honestly, the the social media piece on Saturday was was blowing up, and it was really, really negative. But absolutely after, I think everyone stopped and thought about it, and the emotion died down, most of the feedback has been more than positive. Even today, you know, they'll ask a question about what happened if, uh, if it happened in a semifinal rather than a final. Okay, well, there's things that we've been lucky that we probably dodged some of that, but we can put our hockey advisory committee together and we can come up with some solutions toward how do we fix this, how do we deal with this, that it never happens like this again, and we can do that. We have good people, and we have great coaches, and we have great people working uh, to make that piece happen. Uh, this was a very unique situation. It was very emotional. The adrenaline was running high. That you would expect kids that have been they they gave them they laid it on the line for a hundred and one minutes. Yeah, uh, and, and and were fighting tooth and tooth and toenail against each other, and it, it's one to one. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> and the one kid had what seventy seven saves. The Sylvania Northview goalie. Yes, uh, Mr. Marsh. He uh, if he doesn't get a scholarship out of that piece, I don't know who. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I mean, he the kid was a pin cushion. Yeah, that, that's... he uh, he was pelted all, at, and he and his team they fought like warriors. They just both teams fought like warriors, and it was a fantastic hockey game. 
no one wants it to end like that. But the worst piece would have been, and Vince, we, if we would, you'd have had me on today, if we didn't stop it and a kid ends up with some kind of a catastrophic injury, you'd be on and saying, one second, and one of the, the, the highest paramount proposals and priorities for high school sports, the safety and, and the health of the young people that participate. Yeah. Yes. Well, then, when kids were loopy and couldn't get back in, you know, on the, the bench and people had to help them, why didn't you stop the game? Right. So I, I think uh, in the long run, it's worked out. Uh, certainly been an attention grabber as well. And uh, my assumption is, is that the hockey coaches will be getting together with the OHSAA and there will be uh, a, a some sort of a, a, a schedule in place here to to uh, have this situation uh, never happen again. I would agree with that wholeheartedly, and I and I would say if you put a hundred hockey coaches in the room and you said, "Okay, do you want to have a shootout or overtime?" Ninety nine of them are going to say overtime. Right, but how many overtimes? That's the question. That's that's well, where it gets you know. What we need to do is okay. Let's use a procedure for the overtime. Yes, exactly. And maybe we don't have every overtime the exact same. When you start pulling players. You're going to affect the, the scoring, and you're not going to have you're going you're going to be able to limit it. But the other thing is, if you start pulling players and you're having overtimes, you're not using the same amount of kids. Sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what transpires. But uh, you know, it was uh, quite. Uh, an incredible uh, hockey game and hockey final. And it was interesting because we were trying to have you on before all of this took place. We wanted to talk competitive balance proposal, but it just happens to follow this uh, unbelievable state hockey final. Let's get in to the competitive balance proposal. Uh, You uh, released another one, uh, a modified version. How is it different than the previous two? Well, I think there's probably, it's very similar to the one in the spring. And as you're well aware, the one in the spring, uh, uh, if 10 schools vote the other way, it passes. Okay? And the steel deal, it starts with your EMIS number, just like it did before. Uh, the, and if a youngster in a, in a public high school, if his mom and dad live in that school district, that youngster does not make any increase in the EMIS number, just exactly like the spring. There's a couple of modifications now. The next mod- the first modification, and if it's a public school, that you have a youngster whose mom and dad don't live in that district, but the kid's been open enrolled there since the seventh grade. Okay? A right. youngster in the proposal in the spring had a sports-specific factor tied to him. Remember, football was two and basketball was five. You remember those? Yes. Okay. Well, this youngster, any youngster who's been in that school district since seventh grade, that he's been enrolled there, even though he doesn't live there, that youngster would be a plus one. Instead of a, he would have been a five in the spring. Okay. He's going to be a plus one, and he's going to be a plus one because he's been in that school district. He's been a member of the school district. He's been there. The only difference is his mom and dad don't live there. And any youngster that comes into that high school after the seventh grade, and his, you know, we can say that uh, uh, comes into Bath, and, and the, the youngster lives in Ottoville or uh, Corey Rawson or somewhere that he's got a transfer in there from somewhere on the outside. Uh, that youngster would be the sports specific factor, and if it's basketball, it would be five. If it's football, it would be two. So you you would take the Emus number, and then you add those three numbers on there, and that's the number that we would use to put in your division. The biggest change probably, though, has been the non-public, and and one of the issues, and it was one that we talked about on your show, that was kind of brought to our attention, I think, and you may have been one that brought that attention uh, pretty early on. LCC? Lima Central Catholic. Yes. Lima Central Catholic, because for the non-public school, it's the uh, geographic area where the building sits, and you probably, you made us uh, aware that, uh, were you aware that Lima Central Catholic sits in the Lima uh, Shawnee School District? Most of their kids come from the two parishes in Lima. Okay, well, we made an adjustment this year that Lima Central Catholic, uh, and, and Walt was on the committee, so he had some input into this. Uh, Lima Central Catholic will then have a choice. They can choose to, to stay right where their building sits in Lima Shawnee, or they can choose 
the parish where their kids come from. And the parish it would be, I would imagine, in Lima. And Lima only has one high school, so any of the parishes in Lima, the kids that go to Lima Central Catholic, if they choose the, the parishes in, in Lima, which I imagine that they would, any of those kids that come into Lima Central Catholic add nothing to the EMIS number. They're a zero. Got That's it. That's a big change. All right, so what's been the reaction uh, with the uh, with, with coming out with this competitive balance proposal again, because there has not been a petition since uh, from the Wayne County schools uh, yet. You still feel like uh, the reaction statewide is that something still needs to be done. Well, there was there was they took out they took out the petitions. They did not get enough signatures. Okay, and so when they did not get enough signatures. We have had two surveys of all of our member schools since June. The number one issue that the, the, the schools have asked us to deal with was competitive balance. And the number two issue was eligibility, and it was four times less than competitive balance. Wow. So they, they do want us to deal with it. They do sure. want us to try to find a solution. Uh, we put the competitive balance, and they have met a lot of times uh, since last June. Uh, they've made. They've listened to what our schools say. Uh, these are the suggestions that we have for you, and uh, they're putting out a proposal that they believe very strongly. Uh, they voted unanimously two weeks ago to send us to the board, and it's the first time we had a competitive balance uh, proposal sent to the board that was absolutely unanimous. All Good. twenty-seven. All right. Now it has to be passed, uh, and uh, how do you get schools to vote? Either one way or the other, but just to vote. I mean, how many schools didn't even vote? There was about 160 last yeah. last year. Uh, and we still were at about 80%. So, I mean, we did really well, but we, we would love every school to vote. We're going we're gonna to have more follow-up. We're going to have more emails to schools that don't return their ballots. So, you know, you, you still have a couple of days and, and a reminder. We do have a referendum uh, item on the ballot, and, and you probably remember this because... As a member of the Media Advisory Committee, uh, one of the suggestions from the Media Advisory Committee was to to make a requirement for schools to vote. And so there is a referendum item on in the spring uh, that uh, you're required to return your ballot. It doesn't require you to vote. It, retires, it requires you to return your ballot, uh, which that suggestion came from our Media Advisory Committee. That's not going to help this year because they're simultaneous with this referendum item. It'll help uh, years down the road. Well, the bottom line is, is that uh, it affects every school in Ohio, even though every school in Ohio doesn't have uh, all the sports that uh, this uh, competitive balance proposal affects. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's important for for people to vote, for member schools uh, to vote, and it's uh, the principals. Is that who we've put it on? Uh, right. Uh, the principals, we would we would love for the principals to sit out with the ADs and the superintendents right. and say, okay, let's put our heads together, let's have our administrative team come together and have a conversation about this. Get the people that are dealing with it know. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, important to uh, to make that happen. And then if it does pass, uh, it would be, what, two years from now? Well, it would be effective 2016. Okay. So two, and we'll do a pilot year in 2015. All right. So uh, you got a gut feeling that this might be the one? Well, we feel good. Everybody that, that we ran into feels very good about it. So we'll do our very, very best. Uh, and you can probably help us when it gets around May 1st. Uh, remind schools that, uh, or people to make sure that they remind their school principals to make sure that they vote. Sure. And uh, all of the controversy of the... Uh, the enrollment numbers, that's that's all in the past and everything's... I think uh, hopefully that's all in the past. The crazy part about all the stuff with the Amos, we have nothing to do with it. I know, but it still affected you. It, it, it mostly, we had it's, the perfect yeah. storm, Vince. It yeah. certainly did. Right, so hopefully that's in the past and and uh, we move on. And, and just the importance of, of uh, you know, making sure that we have... Uh, the same system in place. I mean, we alter uh, maybe the uh, the divisions, but we still have uh, public playing non-public in, in state tournaments. Absolutely, and everybody gets their kids 
the same way, and they're affected by how they're putting their divisions the same way. It's a, it's a good system. All right. Uh, Grill State Basketball Tournament coming up this weekend, and then the boys the following weekend. We just had uh, the state bowling tournament with Division One Wapakoneta uh, boys doing well. So uh, this is the culmination of it all uh, with the, uh, the two basketball tournaments coming up. And it certainly is, and it's a it's a it's been a great spring, and uh, the the tur- the wrestling tournament, and the swimming and diving, and the bowling, and the gymnastics have all gone very very well. Uh, I actually hockey went really really well. Just we had a, a hiccup at the end with uh, the health and safety of the kids, but other than that, piece have gone really well, and hopefully. Uh, uh, the next 10 days do well with our two basketball tournaments. All right. I know I'll see you at the state basketball tournament, and we'll try to get you on sometime during our 12 broadcasts around your very, very busy schedule. But one more uh, quick comment. Uh, the transfer rule, how do you think that's working uh, with the uh, OHSAA this year? Well, we've been we've been pleasantly surprised. Okay. Uh, the number of appeals on the transfers have dropped in half, and and we've had two court cases that have ended up dealing with the, the transfer rule, and both judges said that they were so pleased to see the change in the transfer rule that it certainly helped them in the decisions that they had to make. Good news. So all good is good, good right now, including the hockey runner-up trophy heading to the Dan Patrick Show. And uh, great that you gave us time uh, as well. You do a fantastic job. We appreciate uh, having you on the program uh, as often as we do, and we look forward to seeing you at the Boys Basketball State Tournament next weekend in Columbus.